Hello everyone, my name is Archana Devi. Uh, so in this uh, video lecture, uh, we look at the various system parameters uh, that will affect the performance of a processor. So uh, in order to execute a program, um, see what is a processor time taken in order to execute that particular program. So to find out, uh, first we will need to understand uh, various uh, terms associated with this performance. So um, this performance factors talks about uh, clock cycle time, clock rate, uh, execution time and so on. So whenever you talk about a particular program which is going to be executed by the processor, we need to find out what is the total time in order to measure the performance of a processor. Uh, we can calculate the total time taken by the processor in order to execute uh, that program. So uh, if you take a particular program, uh, okay, so uh, if you take a particular program, it will take some number of clock cycles. Okay, so it will take some number of clock cycles in order to execute the whole program. So uh, see, the, 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 this is a clock cycles uh, taken by a particular program. So you have one term called as clock cycle time. Okay, clock cycle time, uh, which is denoted by uh, the letter two. Clock cycle time. Clock cycle time. So this clock cycle time is a time taken in order the uh, time taken in order to complete one clock cycle. That is a clock cycle time. What is the time taken to complete one clock cycle? So how many sec seconds? How many seconds per cycle? So the number of seconds per cycle. The number of seconds per cycle. The time taken to complete one clock cycle. You have two. Okay, so uh, if you take the inverse of this uh, clock cycle time, you get the clock rate. So clock rate is nothing but 1 by clock cycle, 1 by clock cycle time, which is measured in um, uh, frequency, which is measured in hertz. So this clock rate is also the frequency which is measured in hertz. So uh, its uh, unit is uh, the number of seconds per, uh, number of clock cycles per second. So clock cycle time is in one clock cycle, how many uh, seconds? number of seconds per clock cycle so the clock rate is the number of clock cycles taken per second so say for example maybe it might take two clock cycles per second that is the term clock rate so in order to find out the uh, time taken okay the time taken by the processor in order to execute a program so let's assume this is a these are the number of clock cycles uh, taken by uh, the processor in order to execute a particular program so if this number of clock cycles is denoted by uh, say C, the number of clock cycles is denoted by C, uh, in order to find out the total time taken, how can you find out the total time taken by this processor in order to execute this whole program? We know that the total number of clock cycles is given as C and we also know the uh, time taken by a single clock cycle is 2. Right? So the total number of clock cycles is C and the time taken by a single clock is 2. So the total execution time you can calculate it as the number of clock cycles multiplied by 2 or you can also rewrite this in terms of clock rate. The number of clock cycles divided by the clock rate which is denoted by F. So this is how you will find out this is a basic formula in order to find out the clock cycle time. Uh, sorry in order to find the execution time. The number of total number of clock cycles multiplied by clock cycle time or total number of clock cycles divided by frequency. So this total number of clock cycles, how will you get this total number of clock cycles? Okay, how does this total number of clock cycles, uh, how do we get? So if you talk, we can split, we can have a formula for this uh, C also, the total number of clock cycles. Suppose if the instructions are given, okay, this we have taken this as an entire program. We have taken this as an entire program. So suppose if uh, the uh, there is one instruction count, okay, one instruction count, uh, say arithmetic instructions. So they are saying uh, there are around uh, 10 in the entire program, uh, out of the ent uh, in the entire program, 10 instructions are uh, of the type arithmetic or of instruction type 1, which takes an average clock cycle. Okay, it will have some average number of clock cycles uh, that this instruction count 1 will need. Say for example 2, 2 is the average number of clock cycles uh, in, uh, needed for uh, the uh, instruction count 10. Similarly, there can be another classification instruction count 2, um, uh, instruction uh, type 2, where it takes say um, altogether, uh, they are telling say 5, 5 uh, instructions are there uh, for this instruction type 2, which takes some number of clock cycles. So here we are splitting the entire program into its various instruction classification. 
So if we combine all these instruction together, suppose if we know the total number of instruction as some count, we know the total number of instructions and the average clock cycles needed per instruction. The average clock cycles needed per instruction. For that, uh, you have this term CPI. This is a clock cycles per instruction. An instruction count is a total number of instructions. So you can have a formula for this clock cycles. The clock cycles can be written as the instruction count into CPI. So here we have taken the total number of clock cycles as such. How did we get this total number of clock cycles? This is for the entire program. So what if we consider the instructions? Suppose if we know this total number of instructions is say for example, if you take the total, I've taken the total here, say 15 instructions where the average CPI uh, will be calculated for each of these 15 instructions. So if you, um, CPI is nothing but clock cycles per instruction. So if you know the average CPI for the entire uh, uh, instructions given in the program, you can calculate the number of clock cycles as instruction count into CPI. So here we have the formula for the um, time taken. Here we can substitute the value of uh, C as IC into CPI. Uh, you will get a new formula for um, instruction uh, CPU execution time. Okay, so that's what we are going to see uh, first. Uh, so here you can see um, clock cycle time we have already seen it is 2. Then clock rate F which is 1 by clock cycle time which is measured in um, hertz. And the instruction count. Instruction count is nothing but the number of instructions to be executed. That is denoted by IC and CPI. Clock cycles per instruction. It is the number of cycles taken to execute one instruction. It's an average um, term that we are taking. The average number of clock cycles in order to execute an instruction. CPI. Clock cycles per instruction. Clock cycles per instruction. So we can have the formula, the total time needed to execute a program. This is the basic formula. CPU time is given as the instruction count into CPI into 2. This can be rewritten with frequency. So we will see uh, uh, its expansions one by one. So I have uh, rewritten the formula again. CPU execution time we have uh, IC into CPI into 2. Right? So uh, the CPI is the number of clock cycles needed to execute a single instruction. <laughs> So we can uh, rewrite this CPI, okay, clock cycles per instruction is nothing but the number of clock cycles uh, per instruction. So the formula for CPI is the total number of clock cycles divided by the instruction count. So if you substitute this in uh, the equation 1, we can have another formula for the execution time. CPI is nothing but the number of clock cycles per instruction. Uh, so the total, total number of clock cycles per instruction, uh, the instruction count. So the execution time, uh, you know, if you substitute CPI uh, with this formula here, you'll get the instruction count into number of clock cycles by the uh, instruction count multiplied by 2. Or here, uh, you, this will get cancelled and uh, the total execution time becomes the number of clock cycles into 2. That's how uh, we got, this is the first formula that we saw, the number of clock cycles into uh, clock cycle time. Or this can be rewritten as the number of number of clock cycles divided by the frequency okay so this is the first formula that we saw then next uh, with from that we calculated what is this c the c can be written as cpi into instruction count the number of instructions multiplied by cpi will give you c that is this formula so this is uh, one uh, main formula that we will be using okay then uh, let this uh, mips be there before that uh, let us look at uh, this part the total processor clock cycles okay uh, so here uh, here we are talking in terms of uh, per instruction so suppose if you want to find out what is the total number of processor clock cycles okay what is the total number of processor clock cycles so that is a case which i had taken before if you consider each instruction category if uh, a particular instruction uh, they have given that and a particular instruction takes uh, 10 uh, um, number of num 10 uh, number of uh, of that particular instruction say for example arithmetic the instruction count is given as 10 and its cpi is given as 2 then another classification of instruction they have given uh, whose uh, number of instruction count is 5 and its cpi they have given as 10 so the total um, number of clock cycles uh, which we uh, took it as IC into CPI. Now we can split it as the sum of the individual instructions, right? The sum of the individual instructions. So this we can rewrite it as uh, say IC1 into CPI1, uh, right? Plus 
I C two into C P I two. This, uh, if only we have two classification of instruction, we can write the number of clock cycles formula as this way: I C one into C P I one, I C one into C P I two. Similarly, if you have more instruction classification, this goes on till I C uh, n. So n instructions, if you have, so I C n into uh, C P I n. So here I can rewrite this instruction with sigma. Right? I can rewrite this instruction. The total number of uh, in a clock cycles now become sigma i is equal to one to n i c i into c p i i. Now this becomes a formula in order to find out the total number of clock cycles if the instruction count is given. Suppose if they have given directly in the question what is the total number of instructions, then you can use this formula directly. The total number of clock cycles can be multiplied with the total instruction count with the overall c p i. This is the overall c p i for the machine. In order to calculate the overall CPI for the machine, but if they have given the individual instruction count, then you have to take this formula that is written here. Now again, uh, we can uh, rewrite this formula uh, by in order to we can use this formula in to find out the overall CPI. So we know that the CPI, the formula for CPI is the number of clock cycles divided by instruction count, right? So in order to find out the CPI for the machine. Uh, the total CPI in order to find out the CPI for the machine, CPI is the number of clock cycles divided by the total instruction count. So the number of clock cycles we have already found out it as sigma i is equal to one to n i c i into CPI i in CPI i, right? So that divided by the instruction count will give you the overall CPI for the machine. So you can rewrite this formula. This formula is taken from uh, this one. Okay, CPI is equal to clock cycles by i c. So here we are trying to find out the overall CPI. This is an individual CPI per instruction. Individual CPI per instruction. Uh, so if you rewrite this formula, I can uh, write this as uh, sigma i is equal to one to n i c i by i c into C P I, C P I I. So this i c i i by i c sigma. Okay, this is nothing but you can call it as a frequency. Sometimes in the question they have given the frequency, say 60 percentage of uh, arithmetic instruction or 10 percentage of uh, load and store instruction. So that percentage is what is given here, the frequency. So if the frequency is directly given, you can calculate the overall CPI as sigma frequency i into CPI. So sigma i is equal to one to n. How many ever instructions you have for each? If you multiply its frequency with its CPI. So this CPI is. The uh, clock cycles per instruction of uh, the instruction category I, CPI of instruction category I. Okay, so uh, this is in continuation with CPI. So this uh, we have seen the terms uh, um, uh, this uh, CPU execution time. So this is the main formula. In that we have substituted uh, for uh, CPI and we have substituted for clock rate as well. So now we have one more parameter. um in order to measure the performance of a machine that is termed as mips this is another parameter okay so mips is nothing but million instructions per second so number of instructions per second that is um, um ips so million means uh, 10 power minus 6 right million means 10 power minus 6 that is million uh, so uh, yeah, the formula for mips is uh, it's a instructions per second so you will have the um, formula uh, in the numerator you will have instruction it is per second so definitely in the denominator you will have the execution time so mips uh, this execution time will give you the second so instruction per second ic per second so since it is million uh, in the numerator you will be having 10 power minus 6 so if you bring it down to the denominator you will get it as 10 power 6 so the formula for mips this is another parameter uh, which they will ask you to calculate What is the MIPS rate for the processor? That is, uh, how many instructions, how many million instructions are getting executed per second uh, in that processor? So the formula is the total instruction count divided by the execution time into ten power six. So uh, you can substitute uh, this equation one, uh, this equation one uh, in three. So you will get uh, if you substitute for uh, execution time. If you substitute for execution time, you will get it as instruction count divided by Um, T can be substituted as I C into C P I into two into ten power six. So here I C I C gets cancelled. You have C P I into two. So this two is nothing but one by frequency, right? So this frequency will go to the numerator, 
So you will get the formulas um, F by CPI into 10 power 6. This is one formula in order to find out MIPS. If the clock rate and uh, is given and the overall CPI you have found out, then you can use this formula. Uh, suppose if you have not found out CPI, uh, okay, uh, you can use uh, the instruction count and the number of clock cycles if it is given, then you can use another formula. Uh, if CPI you are not finding, you can substitute for the value of um, CPI in this equation. So CPI is substituting 2 in 4, that is 2 is this equation. Suppose if you have the number of clock cycles and the instruction count given. Then you can substitute for uh, CPI in this equation. So you will get F by CPI is CPI is C by IC. C by IC into 10 power 6. So this IC will go to the numerator. IC into F by C into 10 power 6. So this is another formula in order to find out MIPS. So we have two formulas depending upon what parameter is given. You can substitute accordingly and find out the answer. So this is MIPS. Okay. So here I have consolidated all the formulas. Uh, we will start with the CPU execution time. Uh, so CPU execution time we have the first formula. The number of clock cycles multiplied by 2. So number of clock cycles uh, or divided by the frequency. Uh, frequency is the clock rate which is given. So execution time is 1 by clock rate. Okay. So now uh, again the number of clock cycles we have. It is the instruction total instruction count multiplied by the um, um, CPI clock cycles per instruction. So this number of clock cycles is the uh, variable C is IC into CPI. So uh, I'm just uh, briefing up uh, each of the instructions that we have seen so far. Uh, so this main equation we have the CPU execution time is given as instruction count into uh, if you substitute for the number of clock cycles uh, with this formula you will get this um, formula instruction count into CPI into uh, clock cycle time or uh, instruction count into CPI divided by uh, the clock rate. So this is a total instruction count and this is a overall CPI, overall CPI of the machine. If the uh, overall CPI uh, is not given you have to take each individual instruction count and its CPI. So uh, how to calculate that value, how to find out the overall CPI, for that you need to find out the total number of clock cycles first. So the total number of processor clock cycles we have seen, it is um, total in order to find out, number of clock cycles is nothing but IC into CPI I. If individual instruction mix is given, you have to take this formula, uh, sigma I is equal to 1 to N ICI into CPI I. With that you will get the total number of clock cycles. So if you substitute uh, the total number of clock cycles in this formula, you can find out the total CPI. So total CPI will be the number of clock cycles divided by instruction count. That is what is written here. Total CPI is here the uh, number of uh, number of clock cycles. Okay, the number of clock cycles divided by uh, instruction count. So number of clock cycles you have found out as uh, this formula. So this if you substitute here, you will get uh, CPI is equal to ICI by IC into CPI I, sigma, where you have CPI is C by IC. Or this you can also rewrite this equation as CPI is if you take uh, if the frequency is given ICI by IC uh, percentage of the instruction uh, mix is given you can directly use that percentage multiplied by CPI and finally the parameter MIPS rate uh, where MIPS rate if uh, the instruction count um, and the execution time is given you can use this formula uh, or the clock rate and the CPI is given you can use this formula. Or if the instruction count, clock rate and the clock cycles are given, is given, you can use this formula. Depending upon the parameters, you can use whichever formula. So for uh, your uh, computer architecture, advanced computer architecture uh, subject, you can expect a question uh, in order to find out uh, all these parameters given an example. So in the next video, we will see uh, one or two examples uh, where we can uh, calculate these parameters based on the values given in the question. Okay, so I hope you understood uh, this uh, system attributes um, in order to measure the performance of a system. Thank you.